If you're a landscape photographer or travel photographer and you want more control over how your photos look, you'll want something called a polarizing filter. And if you already have one, you still need to know how to use your polarizing filter and when it has the biggest impact on your photos. Now this is a filter that rotates once it's on your lens. So it screws in and then the front part rotates independently of the back. And as you can tell, it's kind of a dark filter. Uh, no matter how you rotate it, it'll cut down on at least a stop of light and usually more. But that's not the point of a polarizer, it's more of a side effect. The reason that you use a polarizer is to do things like this. To be more specific, a polarizer cuts down on most reflections in a photo. It also cuts down on scattered light in the sky and haze in the distance. Now there's some subjects out there where you put a polarizing filter on your lens, but you can't tell any difference in how the photo looks and then other scenes have a huge night and day difference. One thing that polarizers really impact is the sky, which grows much darker with a polarizer, making clouds really pop out. It also has a huge effect on water, where it can practically eliminate reflections. And if you're shooting in a forest environment, your polarizer can reduce a lot of the glare off of foliage. Another obvious effect is glass, and polarizers get rid of reflections there very easily. And then there's a bunch of smaller things that polarizers affect, like rainbows, LCD monitors, and really any reflection that isn't bouncing off of metal. Almost all of this is impossible to replicate in post-production without just a massive effort. I mean, darkening the sky, sure, but removing so much glare from water that you can see beneath the surface, you need a polarizing filter for that. Now, you'll sometimes hear filters like this referred to as circular polarizers, and it doesn't have to do with the shape of the filter. For example, this is also technically a circular polarizer. The reason is there's two types of polarizers, circular and linear. Now you'll almost always hear people recommend circular, and that's for a couple of reasons. Uh, first, there's just a bigger selection of high quality circular polarizers on the market today. Linear polarizers can also mess with the metering system on DSLRs and occasionally autofocus as well. It's no problem, almost any polarizer you find today is going to be circular, but I do recommend making sure before you buy. So, if a polarizer's got all these nice effects on so many subjects, when should you not use one? Well, the big downside of polarizers is that they cut down on your light. When you're shooting handheld in dark conditions, a polarizer is probably not a good idea. The same is true really in most cases where you're at a high ISO. But if you're shooting from a tripod at base ISO, you can leave a polarizing filter on your lens much more often. Although, there are some exceptions. For one, if you have a lower quality polarizing filter or you don't keep it completely clean, you don't really want to be pointing it at the sun. You could introduce more flare in your photo and decrease contrast as well. On top of that, polarizers are not just set it and forget it kind of filters. This is something that really confused me when I started using them. I was annoyed that my polarizer's maximum and minimum settings weren't marked on the filter. And the reason is, there actually isn't a maximum or minimum. The best demonstration I can do is to show you this filter case on top of a wooden desk. As you can see, when I rotate the filter to minimize reflection on the desk, the filter case is reflecting quite strongly. And when I rotate the polarizer to get rid of that reflection, the desk now has it again. So in short, if you use a polarizer, you pretty much should be adjusting it or at least paying attention to it every time that you change subjects. Even if you physically rotate one direction or another, you may need to change the polarizer to compensate. Now another reason to be careful with your polarizer is that the maximum amount isn't always desirable. In some cases, the sky turns way too dark when the polarizer is rotated too far. Other times, you might get rid of so much reflection on the water that you can't even tell it's water anymore. And those last points are not reasons to avoid a polarizer necessarily, but just to use yours carefully. Going along with that, polarizers do not always work well with ultra-wide lenses, especially if there's a lot of blue sky in your photo. If you use a polarizer under these conditions, you could get a really dark band through the sky that looks super uneven. Polarizers don't affect every part of the sky equally. They're strongest at 90 degrees from the sun. In other words, point at the sun, Stick up your thumb 90 degrees and then rotate your hand. Anywhere in the sky that intersects with your thumb will be the most susceptible to polarization. So let's recap. 
Polarizers are awesome at decreasing glare in your photo, minimizing distractions, and improving the colors and contrast in a lot of scenes. But you do need to use them carefully. The best filter rotation for one scene might not be the best rotation for another. And if you use too wide of a lens or you make a wide angle panorama, you need to be careful that the sky doesn't look uneven. And I also don't usually recommend a polarizer if you're shooting in low light conditions because they darken every photo you take. Now I'll end with one final tip. Uh, as a photographer, I recommend buying sunglasses that are not polarized. And this is true whether or not you're actually shooting with a polarizer. Specifically, if you're looking at your camera's rear screen and you rotate it to take some vertical photos, the LCD will either turn really dark or start getting some strange colors. And the viewfinders in most cameras also have some color shift if you look at them with polarized lenses. Now, none of this will affect your photo quality, but it will impact your shooting experience. And on that note, thank you for watching and subscribing to Photography Life. I'm Spencer Cox. Till next time. <music>